Cliff here, part 13, going um, to the Mark II uh, gang tooling setup for Rapid Turn. Uh, you guys should be getting your um, existing owners of Rapid Turn should be getting your machines uh, rebuilt with the new spindles. And uh, I hope to see them on the Tormac website for sale again soon in stock so that everybody else can start considering buying Rapid Turn. Uh, I think it's got a lot of potential. I still haven't been able to test it in every area of its accuracy, so <laughs> bear with me. But here's a few tips and tricks about things that I've learned the hard way that I'd like to put down on the record so that partly so I can remember them better and they may be helpful to some of you guys as well. Cheers. I think I mentioned in a previous video that I like the idea of having a master tool offset, for example tool one, and then all the other tool offsets in the gang tooling being uh, relative to that. And it makes it a little easier for me anyway to set up the offsets. Um, and with a rear um, gang tool post with the uh, TTS bore in it, this post, like the front post, um, it makes sense to use that as a tool offset because you can get it exactly concentric with the spindle by rotating, rotating a dial indicator. You can see I've got a dial indicator here which has a face uh, at right angles to the indicator finger so you don't lose the view of the dial indicator. It makes sense to use that a bore as the master tool offset because that's a fixed position unlike um, finding it by taking a trial cut and measuring it with a with a tool bit because a tool bit is not always a fixed position and you get uh, variations from one job to the next so I'm going to trial the idea of using that center hole in the rear tool post the rear gang tool post here um, as the master tool and when the spindles concentric with that we have tool offset one master tool set at zero on the X and on the Y. Remember the Z is longitudinal so the X is the vertical and the Y is the cross and that's going to be zero zero. So when you're doing production machining and you're making scores of parts or hundreds of parts, um, I know I've raved on about this in the past, I think it's really important that it runs automatically without any operator um, caring for it and removing chips and so on. So um, I think it doesn't matter so much what the cycle time is, because if, you, if you're away doing something else, um, then it can just run quietly by itself. But it, it's got to be able to run automatically without an operator keeping an eye on it. And so you have to think about removal of swarf or chips. And um, you can use a chip breaker um, or you can have the tool retracting rapidly um, and um, removing the chips via lots of kind of tentative moves with the boring bar or turning tool and so on. <clears throat> or you can use compressed air to try and blow the chips out. But either way, it needs to run automatically. So what I've done with this setup is um, got quite a few retractions so that uh, the chips are broken up into smaller pieces. I'll just run it now while I'm talking. It takes quite a bit longer, but um, you don't have such a build up of chips. I couldn't use a chip breaker and a really coarse feed 
to shatter the chips into little pieces because then it might move the card out of the chuck because it's held in a fairly fragile way being a small back-to-back -back part. So you can see here I've got quite a few retractions going. chips are just dropping out the way for the most part. We're not building up to the level where it becomes a problem. And that way you can just let the cart run. It doesn't really matter whether the cycle time is two minutes or five minutes because you can go away and do something else. So um, if you haven't downloaded the latest version of PathPilot 198, um, you might not realize it's got another fantastic facility and that is conversational program editing. So the various um, steps of conversational programming that you uh, save to file or append to file can now be removed or shuffled in position or um, edited in various ways a lot more easily with this uh, latest version of the software. So that's really great news and most appreciated Tormac, thank you. So if you've got a whole bunch of parts to make and um, your CNC lathe has a small diameter spindle like the rapid turn, you can get round it if you've got big diameter parts like this by utilizing the chuck and a spindle stop, I've mentioned this before, um, and back to back design your parts so that you're, you're um, machining two parts per blank up against a stop and um, that way you can uh, production machine scores of parts that are too big to fit through the spindle uh, so you don't have the facility in a small shop with a small CNC lathe to have a big spindle with a bar or feeder to feed long lengths of uh, bar so you can get around it this way um, but obviously uh, you've You've got to spend a, a small amount of time cutting the blanks to the correct length and you can do that on a manual lathe or even on a saw. So you, so you turn one end um, and do the whole run of blanks on one end and then turn it round and machine the other end with a slightly different program because that program has got a, a parting uh, movement that cuts it in half and maybe chamfers it and sizes it the uh, remaining piece in the chuck to the exact length. Remember I talked in part one about the fact that the headstock's made out of aluminium and I was a little bit concerned about thermal expansion. I'm starting to get a little bit concerned about it again now, not because of the bearing so much, but the area underneath there between the headstock and the base gets quite warm after it's been running for a couple of hours and I would imagine, because aluminium has a much higher thermal expansion than steel, that the, the whole headstock, is, is, uh, the spindle centerline is ri raising. And I'm finding that the parts are getting smaller and smaller, and I have to keep adjusting, I can use the wear address, adjustment in the tool table, um, to keep the size right. So I'm wondering whether that's what the problem is. Of course I'm working with a Cetal and it's very flexible and subject to thermal expansion itself. So it's, I'm not really getting uh, conclusive results here, but I am beginning to be concerned that thermal expansion, raising the spindle center height, could be an issue when I get to do critical, accurate work in metal. Well it's a bit hard to see with all of the chips flying, so I'm rerunning the part now with the uh, Rerunning it so it's not cutting any chips. So I'm backing out a lot to clear the chips. And then we're going to move over to the front vertical gang, uh, sorry, to the quick change tool post position. Just taking the finishing cut here. We're just going to take a 
a vertical pass to cut the bottom of the uh, wall. That's it there. Now it's facing the end off and generating an internal chamfer. Now we're going to come over and cut the uh, o-ring grooves in the outside. So we're taking a whoa, sorry about that. We're taking a roughing cut. This is with the uh, grooving tool and a finishing cut. And then we're going to plunge in, cut the o-ring grooves there and there. And then we're going to put little chamfers on. One side, the other side, there, there, and chamfer the end. And then what I can do when I run all the parts back through again, I can cut the other end, which is essentially the same program, but it will add to it the parting tool, which is going to be here in the rectangular gang twirling block. Well, when you've got to make scores of parts, you wouldn't want to be making them on a manual lay that would just drive you crazy with boredom. But it's a heap of fun making them on a CNC lathe with auto tool changing. Well that about wraps up video part 13. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you'd be interested in a Mark III and that'll help me to figure out whether I should put more time into it as a design and prototyping project or not. Alright, thanks for watching. Cheers. We've had a shocking summer this year. It's 1st of February today. And look at that. There's ducks on the lawn.